Hi, this is Mitch Harris from Brave the Cold, and you're listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast with my dogs. Chris, meet Mitch. How you doing, man? Pretty good here in Las Matt? Vegas. In Las Vegas, what the what? What's the temperature there right now? Probably about eighty-six because it's early. Oh, oh, oh yeah, nice. shit! It's early there. It's only like what eleven there. Yeah, yeah. We have one hundred and seventy days with no rain, which is bizarre. Oh yeah, I saw that somewhere. Are you guys affected at all by the fires? Are they anywhere near you guys yet, or no? No, but at one point, one day it was really hazy. The whole you couldn't see the sun. And really, it, just, it depends on the winds. But um, can you smell it there? No, no, no. It, it's higher up. But yeah, it did smell a bit weird, kind of sulfuric. But, oh wow, that sucks. You know, but that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for Vegas, how is uh, how are you, how are you dealing with the uh, this whole besides the fires, which are bad enough themselves, but how are you dealing with the whole world pandemic and trying to make music and keep uh, brave the cold going? Uh, it's interesting to say the least. Um, just laid low from the beginning, kind of saw it coming. And uh, as it happened, it was just basically stocked up. Don't go anywhere. And it, it was like a lockdown here. They shut the casinos, which was, you know, never. It's unheard of, really. Um, prob probably a good call because, you know, at the time, tourists flying in from everywhere, bringing, you know, spreading it. But um, Yeah, hell yeah. But still, we were allowed to go shopping. And it's, it's like, I don't know, the strategy. If it's not a national strategy where everyone locks down at the same time, like, for reals, then it, it kind of kind of productive. But can I get an amen no on that? <laughs> yes, and uh, Rena could probably speak to that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we we did pretty good here in Finland to begin with, but obviously it's the shit is hitting the fan here too as well now. So we are apparently moving from the spreading phase to the escalation phase which means that there's going to be drastic turns for the worst here as well. But you're right. If, if like, if everybody does not commit to it, then there's not going to be a whole lot of point. We're having the whole mask discussion here. Is that going on in Vegas? The whole mask thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's mandatory to go into a shop. I mean, you don't wear it in your car or walk in your dog or whatever, but um, if you want to get in anywhere, yeah, especially casinos, which I avoid. <laughs> um, you know, we had a few yeah. local, they opened the bars for a little while if they had food, and, but they can't survive without gaming. So there was like one place to go and there was nobody there. So I would go from midnight to whenever and, uh, everything used to be 24 hours, but it now closes at 8 PM. And it's really weird. It's kind of like a ghost town, but then on the strip, um, yeah, 50% capacity. And I don't know. So as far as doing music or whatever, or, I mean, this album was done long before that, but to find a label to even release it was challenging because the music industry has been struggling for years. Um, you know, just trying to get anyone's attention is difficult. And Mission 2 Entertainment was seriously into the music, which was like, you know, they believed in it and the whole team was excited about it. So that makes a big difference. And um, to, ha to release an album during times like this, you would think that everyone's at home online and and that they would you know be interested in music but i find a lack of interest like people are excited about a few bands a few releases but mostly they're doing memes or more concerned about their jobs or future which is understandable but it's it's really hard to get people's attention unless there's a tour coming you know i find music has become people expect free content and you know yeah. they, they might pick up the album before the show if they're tour, just to be familiar with the new stuff they don't, they're supposed to be loyal metal fans, but I see a lack of interest on all sides. You know, I see huge bands posting new releases and like five likes and stuff. It's really weird to get the attention. So I appreciate your support and trying to get the word out because um, I think it's an important album. Um, it's very current lyrically, um, right. by chance, really. And uh, yeah, at least your first single, which I listened to, was definitely very current. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I lost my trail of thought here. Please, Chris, Bruce, pick it up. No, so, but if it's, well, so w you wrote them before the whole pandemic hit, you said, huh? So that's kind of weird how it turned out that they ended up being almost prophetic. Yeah, I mean, it's something I've been studying. I'm just researching my own stuff, mostly late night dystopian interests, and I find it 
cool topics to write about reflections on. I've always looked at lyrics like uh, hieroglyphics in a way, something symbolic of our past, of what happened to humanity, you know, not like someone will find it and play it in 2000 years, but it's more like a history log of current events that, um, which I find interesting and, and you don't really talk about this with your friends. Oh yeah, the end of the world is coming. Oh, well, I'll be microchipped and forced to vaccine. And you know, it's like, you know, I looked at the lyrics or listened to it a few times during the pandemic. And I was like, wow, it's saying pandemic omen. And like everything it says is kind of happening now. And um, scary really that uh, I, it's not something I ever wanted to happen. It's just something that we've been veering towards as a human race for many years, you know, nothing to do with climate change or anything like that. It's just <clears throat> current events and the state of globalization and, you know, the powers that be that have a master plan to control the world, basically, and who suffers at the end of it so the elite can profit and eliminate the middle class, really. And that's the general theme of the album. Um, the title, Scarcity, Scarcity, however you want to pronounce it, was uh, based on, you know, cryptocurrencies, the volatility, um, making something scarce because there's only so much available, which creates value um, when our commodities like water, agriculture, and things, gas, electricity, things we can't live without are in abundance, but um, they control the prices and the flow of that, and people don't seem to get it worldwide. So the scarceness of everything is basically the, the general theme for the title and um, the, the way that they can control the people with that, really. And it goes much deeper into the lyrics, but it, it's basically open-minded. It's not... Uh, you know, this is the the only way, like my way is my opinion. It's just vague food for thought that makes people aware, hopefully. Right. What, what we're up against, really. Yeah, and I find it like so interesting because obviously you mentioned water and the scarcity of water, and that's going to be our next huge issue, actually. Like if you um, like disregard the whole like climate climate change and so on, but we're going to run out of, of clean water for people to drink, and that's going to like send masses of people um to migrate and, and be refugees and so on. But we already have like a solution to this, but it costs money. It's called uh, reverse osmosis, where you can actually turn salty water into sweet water. And we have plenty of salty water on this planet. Is yeah. this something you know anything about? Yes, I've read about it. But, you know, if it costs money, but it doesn't count for votes, then they don't count. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> So here's a here's a question. You're in Vegas. How often yes. do you go to the strip or do you just avoid it like the plague on a regular basis? Pre COVID. I avoid it like the plague, but I also work on the strip. I, I did um I work in production. I've always been into production, if not audio or video. I was once a media teacher, so um very limited work as a musician here for you know a steady job. So I, I did production. Uh, I learned um, as an audio video technician doing video walls for Ricky Martin and Backstreet Boys, Pitbull and uh, Lyle Lovett. And then I was supposed to do Kelly Clarkson. And then that's when COVID hit. So basically you go in, you do the show and, and getting off the strip is really hard. It's, it's like thousands of people. It could take 45 minutes to go, you know two miles yeah. so yeah it's just i don't know and now with the spread of whatever it's it's not uh, i've been past there a few times it's it's quite dead actually now so it's just weird man it's changed so much and yeah if, if you can avoid it it's like you know i mean i have a friend who works up there get a free room at caesar's or you know go to the pool but it's i don't know man it's okay for two or three days maximum and then you've seen it all i prefer nature and the mountains and the lake yeah you and me both yeah, yeah hey, have cool. you have you ever run into a guy by the name of bob lentini during your audio video work no not yet oh okay not, does he in the union or no he um he installs live sound systems in the casinos oh and he builds the software okay. and he builds the software that runs a lot of the like uh touch screen sound devices that they right. run yeah yeah, I've had to learn some of that stuff. But um, I have a friend who does, um, not soundproofing, but, you know, when they make the acoustics for live venues. But it, it's not Bob Latini. But, yeah. yeah, it's a small world in that field. It's probably a good, it was a good occupation to have. <laughs> it, it will be again. It'll it'll take yeah, a bit for it to come back, but it'll come back. Um, so where where 
because I, I, um, one of my friends used to live in Vegas. I got married mm-hmm. in Vegas. Um, I mean, that sounds bad enough as it was. Elvis, no, no. Elvis was not there, but, um, right. she was like, oh man, no one from Vegas goes to the strip. Like nobody. They, unless well, we, they work there, they don't go. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you like to play or gamble, there's like these station casinos, which are like on the outskirts. So that's more for locals and like pensioners or whatever. But um, I prefer local dive bars and I go out to see friends and people and they avoid the strip. You know, there's one called the Double Down Saloon, which had a bunch of punk hardcore bands playing for free. Always free to get in and always good friends from the old days. And uh, the Crown and Anchor British Pub or the dive bar has decent shows. And I'm quite close to all that. Um, you, sometimes you'll go downtown for a show. There's a venue down there called Triple B's, but it's it's more like in and out, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's very few shows on the strip unless it's in the arena, you know, higher standards. Hard Rock was cool because it was off strip and they had like a three thousand capacity. So you know, it's oh, that's a nice size venue. Yeah. I don't want to turn this. I don't want to turn this into a Vegas talk. We're here to talk about your band, right? but I'm okay. just always curious to know because you know this podcast is more about getting to know the artist. You know, it's not the same usual questions like, where did you get your band name? Blah, blah, blah. It's like yeah. a casual conversation. So I always go off script a little bit. Bruce? Cool. Oh, that's... Um, where do you see... Well, where do you see you guys uh, landing on the other side of this? I mean, are you planning on... Are you doing any kind of live streaming stuff now? And in, are you doing any sort of booking or anything for the future or writing or... Is it too early? There's still a lot of material that we didn't use. And, and I've, of course, I'd brush up and write something new. We're, we've talked about a second album because uh, Dirk will be busy with Megadeth at some point, like long tours. So we might try and get something in before that. Um, but as far as doing live shows, he'll be busy. So, you know, he said, hey, feel free, bro. If you want to do something with another drummer, you know, go ahead, push the message. So we'll see. Um, I've worked with people and we'll, we'll see where it goes. But right now, I can't see live shows coming back till 2021, 2022. Uh, there won't be any live streaming. But um, I took the liberty of we have seven music videos coming out, which is kind of like a, a narrative of the themes. It's all dystopia, quite dark and disturbing, but also, you know, uh, an underlying message that supports the lyrics. And there'll be a new video coming out Friday for the next single, which is Blind Eye. And... Uh, it's very interesting from a Polish director that um, I edited myself and got permission for, thankfully, and they've been amazing. All these directors supported the art and um, helped us make these amazing videos. So that should keep the ball rolling and, you know, create a different angle instead of us playing with a Brady Bunch screen and, you know, uh, right. the typical, I mean, whatever. I mean, I find it cool to watch a band scream their head off but after a while it, i like a storyline too so sometimes animation goes further but it's a different angle than the actual live performance but uh oh sure it could be a great live band at some point um it's got a lot of energy a lot of catchy rock and tunes and intense and some dynamics so i would love to do something we'll see how it goes it's going to be challenging we might just do some festivals or you know jump on tour with a band in, in America if there's something cool going on. It's very difficult to start from scratch in a van at 50 years old, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to see where it goes. And never say never. So what's it like playing in a band with Dirk? I mean, the guy is arguably the best metal drummer out there. What what was it He's, like? What was it like working with him? Or what is it like it working was, with him? It's like telepathic we, we very little discussion about what to do <laughs> nothing but smiles and energy and me standing there saying do it around phil here do some punches like just <laughs> sort of like a conductor would do to you know a whole group of musicians and and he just knows what to do it's you don't have to talk about it he's always smiling you know we'll sit on the couch and talk about oh we need a title for this song go through some ideas and i like to involve him as much as possible what do you think of this or the lyrics to that two choices of this and, and he really appreciates any you know being able to give any input and i trust his opinion he's been there for years and oh it's, yeah it's supposed to be fun man and it, it yeah. was fun you know sometimes the albums can be challenging or super critical we got to beat the last album critically acclaimed a bunch of crap you get in the 
there's no expectations. You just make something fun and free from the heart. And whether people love it or hate it, it's like, that's not what art is about, you know. It might not sound like art because it's extreme and intense, but um, deep down, you know, as creators, you need to feel free without limitations. And the first album is always fun. The second album is a different thing. Where do you go from here? But um, there was some other more varied material, which will come out on an EP. We didn't want to make an extra long album that doesn't fit on a CD. So, uh, you know, it'll show progress by the EP and, you know, it kind of pull things through, you know, the next year and see where it goes. Cool. Yeah. No, awesome. I, I just followed your page on Facebook. Oh, awesome. Hey, how, 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 how 2020 is that? <laughs> right? Oh, I know. That's it. It's like, how do you get people to click on shit these days? Even if it says free, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, I everything's free are- now. You know, a a good friend of mine, Andy, he he always told me, music is no longer an item people buy. It's a business card that you use to advance your career. Yep. It's content marketing for the next tour for most bands. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if you spend too much money making it, recording it, then it's going to be hard to make that back because, you know. If you can't just tour constantly, then an artist can't survive, and it's become difficult. Yeah, and for the first time in history, I mean, music also has no value besides sentimental value to people, and oil became less valuable than music for the first time in history. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy when it's no longer a commodity. Yeah, you know, we don't need it. No one's going there, and suddenly they're like, it's costing us money to keep this. So. Yeah, yeah, no. I grew up. I grew up in oil country in Canada, in up in Alberta, oh, wow. up in Alberta, and it's a ghost town there, man. There's, there's no one working. It's, wow, it's kind of sad to see, honestly. So many industries got fucked. So many industries. It's not the corporations we should care about. It's the people, you know. It's, Absolutely. You know, corporations they take the risk, anyways. But what people thought was a secure job is, you know. Or you, you have a college or university education at, at the end of the day. The essential workers didn't even need a, a high school diploma for their jobs. Yeah. And, and what did they get returned? So it's it shows the state of the world, you know, what the value of education as well, which I'm becoming more skeptical as we go. Interesting. Well, cool, man. Rene, you got anything? I actually have two things. One, I want to steer you back to the conspiracy theories. Do you think that COVID is actually used to undermine the strong economic situations of more well-off countries to make it easier for the elite to actually gain control of, you know, the entire planet. Well, it's always been about a one world government and all the research I've done, how they would achieve that, you know, the monitoring, the monitoring, the surveillance, the economy, the uh, digital currencies, the lack of, uh, under the table, you know, people working, selling stuff, everything will be taxed with a new digital dollar, which has been approved. And the thing is, it's like, yes, they can attack one country at a time, but this is a systematic global plan all at right. once, you know, to show the weaknesses, create unrest, turn the, uh, the public against the government. It's like everyone... Most people have always hated their presidents or leaders in every country or didn't believe in their flag and other people do. And it's like they create it's neighbor versus neighbor now. So basically they force force people back to work so the elite can profit from both parents working. It's not a a one parent family anymore. It's like they need that money and they they want the economy back at all costs. If if human life is the case, then, yeah, Um, I wouldn't say it's a conspiracy. It's a master plan, which is hard to achieve. And there are people trying to stop it. Not me, for example, but politicians that are actually actively saying no and trying to take control back from these countries, which have been basically supplying the world with everything. The world relies on... There's so many countries that don't produce anymore because it's cheaper to buy from somewhere else. So I'm not naming any names or pointing any fingers, but it's... uh, definitely an agenda and uh we've been sold out a long time ago you know all these people have been bought out they sold us out and we'll see if we can get through this really yeah 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 agreed it won't be from a revolution won't help that's what they want we need to be to help each other you know yeah. we need each other more than ever we're packed. Oh, sorry. 
our, our next next um, interview calling. But my second hey, thing, yeah. was that Mitch, I think we've actually met. I think we may have discussed conspiracy theories at Tuska Festival backstage, like maybe six uh -huh. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Really? There's that's cool. There's not many people I know that you can talk to about it without them thinking you're crazy. You know. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, it's small talk. I might brush on the conversation, see the reaction, and I can live without it. You know, I don't need to convert anybody to my philosophies. It's just. Mm -hmm. It's food for thought, really. There's so much crap out there, it's misleading. You know, you never pretend to know it all because I've had predictions throughout this whole thing, which have all come to light. And the next phase right now has been all too quiet. I'm expecting the next month to uh, right. erupt in some kind of plan that nobody saw coming. It's just. Right. Ugh, I I'm, I'm scared out of my life for oh. my kids' yeah. futures and everything else. We'll get through it. Somehow we adapt. We have to thrive through this shit. We can't be down. You know, you got to make big decisions sometimes. If you need to sell your house and move somewhere because there's no work, don't talk about it. You got to do it. But then you yeah. can do it and then nothing happens. <laughs> and you go, fuck, man. Boy. So where do you go where it's any better? There's nowhere to go. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. Mm, yeah that's, that's, that's true. So we just wait it out and hope that people can realize that, you know, they took the bait. They've been, we've been deceived. I'm not saying Corona is a lie. I know close people. I have family members that died from it. It's scary shit. It's real. But uh, the mentality, they divided us. The media is poison. Right. It's fucking yeah. poison. And thanks for being yeah. to spreading a, wor a good word, something with value. This is exactly what I meant. Like, you know, the virus is obviously real. It's not a hoax. But then it's utilized to achieve other means for ends or ends for means. I can't remember which way we're supposed to put those words. Like, <laughs> a means to an end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But hey, thank you so much for this insight. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was a good conversation. Guys, what do you think of the album, by the way? I've only heard the one single so far, but I love that one. Like you said, that there are the influences of the, of the good old days <laughs> there to be heard, and it's a kick-ass track, and I like it. Oh, I like that it's timely. We caught that ahead of time, even though that was one of my earlier questions that, you know, you couldn't have known what was coming down the path 100% and you kind of nailed it. Pretty much yeah, spot on. We, yeah, but scary. Now, we, though, you know, we have a lot of smart people who talk about like what's to come. For instance, like what happened in 2015 with the like mass migration. We had like the ex president of Finland, Marti Ahtisari, for instance, warned us in 2013 that if certain measures in the Middle East are not taken, this is going to happen in the next couple of years. And then people act super surprised when it does, you know, and even the pandemic, like, you know, there's been a documentary on Netflix since. 2017, I think, telling us that, hey, it's only a matter of time before this is going to happen. Right. Like, you know, things are not yeah. supposed to be if you look around a little bit. Well, our biggest, okay, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, it's, this country is set for disaster because we have so many rights. It's impossible to actually control when people have the right to do this or that, the right to voice their opinion and protest or whatever. So that also spreads the virus. So we're not really set up. Uh, we're probably in the weakest position, even though, of course, the Constitution is important. It, it makes us a target. Right. Yeah. You like my dogs? <laughs> yeah, we've all got dogs, so we're used to it. Usually my Great Dane is barking in the background. Yeah. It's all good. Hey, we really got to got to let you go because we got something coming up behind you. But I want to thank you for taking the time. Chris, are you good? Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thanks, your, your time. Yeah, me and too. And yeah, before we back with any feedback, once you check out the record and read the lyrics, 